Hello everybody, this is Solar Tiger with another Solar Power video. Today is the 21st of March 2021 and it's a Sunday and outside the weather has been bright, just a bit overcast, but there has been gaps in the clouds and the sun has come out at times. So outside you can see the three 100 watt solar panels, they're all wired in series to produce about 60 volts. They are the three 100 watt solar panels and they're outside on the shed. And inside is my solar cabinet. And I have the charge control I have is the Fitron Smart Solar Charge Controller, the MPPT 100 slash 20. It's a 20 amp MPPT solar charge controller. And that is my setup. As you've seen before, I installed the charge controller on Christmas day of last year, as you saw in my previous videos. And I showed you how to set it up. I, this controller has Bluetooth built in, hence the smart name. And I also have it hooked up to the Raspberry Pi to monitor it online on the internet through the VRM remote portal. Uh, I've done videos on that as well before. On the front of my cabinet I have the Victron BMV712 battery monitor and that monitors my system and at the moment you can see the batteries are at 13.75 volts I have three 12 volt batteries in parallel to give 12 volts 300 amp hours. They are sealed AGM batteries, the seal type, sealed AGM, and they don't vent off under normal conditions. So this is a video just as an update. So I'm going to take you to my iPad and we link to the controller with the Victron Connect app by Bluetooth. So if I just go back here a second. So this is the screen. So I got the solar charge controller and the battery monitor. They've been named as solar panels and battery bank respectively. So if we go to the solar charge controller which I've called solar panels. The app takes a couple of moments to connect to the charge controller and we can see that we have 22 watts coming in. It's late afternoon now, it's just gone half past four in the afternoon. So we've got 23 watts coming in and the solar panel voltage is 59.66 volts. The current coming in is 0.4 amps. The battery bank's at 13.77 volts and the controller is putting one amp into the battery bank. The controller's in float mode, so it's just maintaining a charge on the batteries. And the DC output of the charge controller is putting out half an amp into various things I'm running. The controller has a 30 day history that's shown on this bar graph. So we've got the days here of the month, so it's overlapping February and March. And the height of the bars depends on the number of watt hours. And then each bar shows the period in bulk mode, absorption mode, and float mode. If I tap this bar, and you can see that it does a breakdown of how long it spends in each mode. Now ideally you want to go into float mode every day, but that's not always possible depending on the weather. So let's go back to that. So that's the sort of bar chart for the history. You can go into details and it shows you the number of watt hours on the solar panel, the peak wattage of the solar panels, uh, the peak voltage of the solar panels. So today the panels have peaked at 62 watts. 
and the peak voltage was 65.68 volts. Now I'm running all my panels in series because I have an MPPT solar charge controller, which means you have a high voltage coming in on the solar panel side and your charge controller down converts the voltage. So it steps the voltage down, but it steps the current up. With the MPPT system, it means you have a high voltage at the solar panel end with a low current and the lower the current in the cable coming from the solar panel the less losses you'll have so it's better to run at a high voltage low current and you can put the solar panels a good distance away from the solar charge controller and you won't have much losses in the cable which means you can site the solar panels in a position that gets the best sun and you can use thinner wire that is cheaper and easier to handle and then when the power gets to the charge controller it converts the voltage down to the correct voltage for the batteries so about 13 to 15 volts for my batteries and then it increases the current because the power has to stay the same that's how MPPT works and it's more efficient than the PWM type controllers where you have to wire all your panels in parallel which means more current goes down the feed cable from the solar panels and you'll incur higher losses in it so that's not good so MPPT is the way to go so my batteries have peaked at 14.68 volts the minimum my batteries have been down to is 12.55 so that's most likely to have been overnight and then the controller has charged my batteries up to the maximum voltage and at the moment I'm in float mode so it's just maintaining a charge because I have AGM batteries the maximum voltage of the battery bank will be about 14.8 volts but if you have a different type of battery, then you may have a different voltage set point. So that depends on what batteries you have. It says here I've consumed 70 watt hours from the DC output of the charge controller. That does not include any use of any inverter because the current doesn't flow through the charge controller. So that is the uh, charge controller side of the system. I will go back now and show the battery bank point of view. So my battery bank is monitored with the BMB712 which has Bluetooth in it. So all this information I'm getting over Bluetooth from the battery monitor through the Victron Connect app. So we can see here that the battery bank's at 13.76 volts. I'm currently putting 0.8 amps into the battery, and that's a power of about 11 watts. The consumed amp hours is saying zero because my batteries are fully charged. If I use my loads, then this will rack up a number, a negative number. And then during the day, as you charge the batteries, the value will hopefully get back to zero. If you don't have enough sun to cover that, it will, you will have a minus value that you'll be carrying on to the next day. So it says that the time remaining is infinite because I'm actually charging the batteries at the moment. And the relay is open, but I don't have that connected to anything at the moment. The app also has a history section. And it's showing nothing for some reason. I'll just go back a minute. Huh? Right. There's a history section. So it shows you the deepest dis the deepest discharge I've ever put on my battery bank was 58 amp hours. The last discharge shows zero as I have fully charged my battery bank. The average discharge has always said zero for me for some reason. I have some quirks with that. 
the average discharge has always been zero. This is the cumulative number of amp hours I've drawn from the battery since I installed the battery monitor. In this case, I've drawn 5,115 amp hours from my batteries. Then the next line shows charging and discharging. And it shows here that the total amount of kilowatt hours I've taken out of my battery bank is 64.9 kilowatt hours. But my charging energy that I've charged into the battery bank is 76.2 kilowatt hours. So it's showing here that I've always put more charge into my battery bank than I've taken out of it, which is good. If it was the other way around, then you have a problem where you're not charging your batteries enough and you're always running them down. Now, I'm going to apologize now for the sun coming out because you can't see, but the total number of charge cycles on the battery bank since I installed the monitor for some reason is zero. That's obviously not true since I've had it since Christmas time. I've obviously put cycles on the battery bank, but for some reason the apps always show zero. The time since the last full charge is zero because my batteries are fully charged and I'm still charging them. The synchronizations have always said zero as well. Basically, it synchronizes every time it gets to 100%, it calibrates the state of charge indicator. That's always said zero for some reason. The number of full discharges always has said zero for some reason as well. Don't know why, there's some issue with that. And then you have the battery voltage section. The minimum, the lowest voltage my battery bank's ever been down to is 12.25. That's lower than I would like it to be. The maximum voltage of my battery bank is 14.89. That's the highest voltage it's ever been charged to. And since I do have the AGM type of sealed deep cycle battery, this voltage is fine. If you have other types of lead additive battery, then yours may show a lower voltage and you may need to set your set point to a lower voltage. But that again is a, de depends on the type of battery you have. I have AGM batteries, they need a higher charge voltage. The charge voltage is specified on your batteries. There's normally a label somewhere on the battery telling you the charging information. If not, you can always get that from the manufacturer. You should not exceed the, the voltages stated, otherwise you can damage your batteries. And then, because the monitor has high and low voltage alarm settings, you can set a high point and a low point, and then an alarm will sound when you get to either point. I've not done that, so mine says zero. So you can see my batteries are 100% charged, which is good. The sun's now come out, it's very nice and sunny. So I shall go back to the solar panels and we're connecting to the trailer charge controller. So this version of the app on the iPad only connects to my devices via Bluetooth. Um, I have a different version on my iPhone and I can connect to my devices over the internet through the VRM portal on the Victron Energy website and through the Raspberry Pi that I have connected to my devices. So I connect my devices to the Raspberry Pi it connects to the VRM portal over Wi-Fi and then on the internet. So I can view all my information through the VRM app over the internet. So you can see my batteries are fully charged and floating them right now. The solar panels are bringing in 60 volts at a power of 22 watts. So everything is going well. So this is Solar Tiger saying thank you for watching my video. 
If you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section. I thank you, the people, for the interest that I've had in my channel, where people have asked me questions, and I have tried my best to offer advice and information. I will say that I'm not, I'm not a solo professional. I'm just a hobbyist, and I will just tell you to the best of my, my ability and the opinions that I have and I'm willing to help anyone so thank you for watching and until next time this is Solar Tiger saying thank you for watching goodbye bye